Whenever you Google autumn, there are so many different artistic interpretations of what autumn can be, from the abundance of food to kindness to spending time with your family. In poems, movies, and books, I thought with this doll that I might show my version of autumn and that it's really an animal, an animal that provides for the forest and helps take care of the animals until the next fairy season comes and passes on the baton. So here, I already sculpted and baked the head, and now I'm just drilling a hole so I can attach a string to make the head movable. I had to cut the head in half and bake it. Once it was cool, I glued the head back to the scalp, and then I used wet raw polymer clay that I already pre-mixed and applied it to the seams so that I could reconnect the head wire was left inside the seams as I baked it so that I could curl the wire back in it of itself, attach the elastic band, and then connect all the components together. And now you can see me testing it out, making sure that the, hand, the head is tight enough to the body that it can hold its position. I thought it would be fun to test out a new way to apply the base color for her skin tone as before I was just using a sponge and it was leaving a lot of grit and dirt on the surface of uh, the dry doll. So this time around I bought a mini airbrush machine and it was really compact and portable. It took me a while to figure out unfortunately but I was able to spread a pretty even layer on the components that I had baked. So at this point, it took me four layers to get to opacity. I had to thin it out quite a bit to a milky consistency to get it to that level. I didn't want to take any chances actually using the airbrush to add detail to the body because I didn't know what I was doing. So I opted to just do the base layer and then started going back to my, pa my chalk pastels to start blushing the face. So the spirit animal for autumn is a fawn. So I started with blushing these ears and I had to get the whites in before I did any other detail. It took me four layers to get it to the right opacity um, between coatings of Mr. Super Clear. With their blushing, I wanted to go for more um, not realistic way. I don't know the best way to say it, but I didn't use a lot of like blues and greens on her face. I wanted to keep it more so neutral. Um, I think I wanted all the attention to really go to her eyes. I previously marked out where I wanted her eyebrows to go with the pastels and then I'm just going back in with the brown pencil to put in the details. Later on, I intend to actually paint out a few strands of eyebrow hairs using acrylic paint. And I quickly applied the same pencil to the corner of her lips to apply some depth. Favorite part is doing the eyes. Uh, because her face is bigger, I was able to do a really nice detailed eye, which I really enjoyed. The eyes are very formulaic. You always start with the blue line for the shadow on the top. And then you paint in the whites of the eyes. That The whites are never actually just white. They are white with like a hint of blue. You then do your base color. I have chosen brown. And then you're going to do the iris, which would be a deeper brown for me. And then I was going to go back in with uh, black, I think. And now I'm just trying to do some highlights within the eye to give it some depth to make it look like she's actually seeing. Um, and a, a goal of mine is always to make each doll look like they're looking back at you. It's kind of hard to do because I'm painting my own eye. I think in the future I'm going to start working on making like inset eyes so that I could just, I don't know, make different eyeballs and I was going back and forth with the eyes trying to give it a very give her a wide-eyed stare kind of look like what you imagine a deer in headlights would look highlights to the eye um, every time you you add something to, like a small detail it dramatically changes uh, what you're doing especially if it's a, a small item that you're painting because every stroke matters 
as a woodland creature, I decided to make her um, on the natural side, not too much makeup. Um, so she has very natural lips and they're just going to be slightly glazed. I wanted to add a few details to her ears, add a little bit more hair. Um, I decided to reinforce um, the coloring underneath her eyes by apply applying some mica powder. I'm also just giving her some gentle glow. It, in the final version, you don't really see the gold as much because I think the white overpowers it. But she just needed some more depth underneath her eyes. The last step when I'm painting is to seal all the painted surfaces with some Duraclear. It's a polyurethane that I get from Michaels. It gives a really glossy finish. I'm now adding the hair. I wasn't really sure what hair I was going to use, so I was just, you know, testing the comparison. I had a piece of weave. It's human weave, human premium weave that I had bought randomly that I decided to use because I wanted her roots to be a lot darker than the ends of her hair. At first, I was using Annie's glue to glue down her roots, but it wasn't drying fast enough and it was falling off. So now I'm just applying hot glue. Um, as this is a doll that I don't think I'm going to, it's just going to be like a decoration piece. I decided not to just, not to make a wig clap, but just to hot glue everything to her scalp. You may notice that I did not finish her closure and that was because I completely forgot. It was taking me way too long to finish it, so I didn't. And this part, I'm just constructing the body. The only comment that I want to make is when you're trying to make a standing doll that you're not going to be posing too much. You should use stronger wire than I use. I use regular armature wire that's super bendy and it caused me a lot of issues towards the end. So the next doll that I do, that's gonna be a standing doll, I'll make sure to use a stronger wire if I know that she's just gonna be standing in place. As always, I sew a nude color to her body to represent her skin. I used a two-part epoxy clay in color orange. It, it's actually expired, so I need to replace it. But I used it to add some mushroom detail to her shoes. I applied it to her shoes and to parts of her torso and hands. Once that dried, or, well, I don't think it dried at this point. It, it, it does dry in 24 hours. Um, at this point though, I started adding some pieces of moss that I bought from Michaels in their Christmas section, just to give her that um, overgrown look on her shoes and things like that. I wanted it to flow naturally and organically from her shoe up to her skin, and I added it in different parts of her body. designing the dress I decided to use a bouquet of flowers that I got from Michaels and use the petals I cut them up and just started wrapping her body in them to create a dress because she's a fairy so I wanted her to blend in with her environment if she ever had to Initially, I was going to make her dress removable, but towards the end, I decided it would just be easier just to sew everything to her body. Uh, this is like a one and done project, so I realized I wasn't going to make another outfit for this. So uh, I started adding on petals and hot gluing some petals until the dress came together. I got some um, materials, some of that twine um, that I purchased from Michaels and more moss and was gluing up along her leg. I also found some, well actually I cut up a sweater that I knew I wasn't going to use again um, to add some of the brown um, knitted pieces as you see me. Uh, the twine was from the bouquet of flowers. Then I thought it would be cool to add some hair pieces to her ears to give her more of a deer look to her as a lot of deers have the white in the middle and then the brown fur around their ears so I added some yarn and I glued them to the sides of the clay. Once they were dry or semi-dry, I decided to trim them down so you could still see the detail of the ears but still have the hair protruding from the sides. I 
And as I started to add accessories, I decided to use found found materials that I had in my room. Over the years, I collected a lot of yarn and beads and things like that. So I thought it would be fun to, instead of buying copious amounts of materials, just use what I already had around. Because I think what the series is about is each doll is adapting to the environment. And because she is an autumn doll, she should have found earthy materials. And towards the end, I decided to start to add a little bit of glitter to her body. Um, I went with glitter rocks, or I think they're called broken glass shards, and I glued them to her legs and to her chest. Because I think she needed some sort of etherealness to her um, that just wasn't there yet. And also a little bit of regalness that I wanted the, the gold and the rock combination to bring out. Here I am now just adding the beads to the braids that I made. I don't don't ask me what these are supposed to be. I don't know. But I, I don't know. I think I was going for like a rogue braid, rogue lock kind of look. And I went back into the face to add um, a face tattoo that's supposed to represent Earth. Because I think Autumn is the closest to Earth. And each doll in the series is going to get... Um, a tattoo on their face and it's all going to be interconnected so that when they come to when they come together you'll you'll see it 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 should come together towards the end once the face was dry i decided to take my curling iron and curl her hair um one tip i have is when you're curling doll's hair to set them heavily with um hairspray because then when I came back the next day, all her curls fell, and I didn't have the energy to recurl her hair, so I just left it like that. Um, I was going for a wild bedhead look anyway. And then I went back in with the mushroom pieces, and I decided to color them in. I, I, I They didn't look natural the way they were, because they had no depth to them, so I decided to paint them a mushroom color. It was just... Um, all these paints are craft paints that I'm using none of these are artist grade paints Um, they're cheaper and they're watery enough that you can go back in and layer the colors which is what I did Um, I recommend using craft paint Uh, for a long while I was using artistic paints and it's so much cheaper to get all your painting done with craft paints One of the reasons why it took me so long to finish this doll was because I kept going back in and adding even more details. I didn't, I wouldn't consider even details. I was just adding more fluff everywhere. I don't know. I just wanted her to look really overgrown. I was, my initial concept was beyond the deer thing was a tree, like a a tree. But I, when I was looking up other like autumn figures, I saw a lot of um, representations of trees there anyways. (laughs) I decided to go with animals watching at this point thank you uh this is the home stretch now i decided the last thing that she needed was a headpiece so here i am taking that epoxy sculpt from previously i had mixed them together and i decided to make a bunny that you will not see her with because i did not use it but i decided to make a few animal pieces just so i can see what i would include with the headpiece um because you know she's a woodland creature who takes care of other animals she needs to have animals with her out of the three animals i made i decided to go with the bird and here i am just cutting out some feather fluffs from some craft feathers that I had and I'm adding it to the bottom of the bird. I was trying to create um, a fluffy bird I guess. Uh, I didn't want to add feathers going all the way up because I actually don't know. I don't know what kind of bird this is. It's very it's a, it's a very skin, skinny bird um, but you know I thought you know adding a little feathers couldn't hurt. And here I am taking a, a piece of the flower arrangement that I had before and now I'm just making a little headdress with some of that twine and moss and I hot glued everything together. Be careful of your hands. Hot glue is very hot and my hand was sticking to everything. 
using a piece of the wire from the plant, I glued it to the green thing and I used sweater bits to attach everything where I applied it to her head. And with that, that is the end of the doll. Well, not she's not dead, but it's the end of the look. <laughs>